um yeah so in today's session uh, about chat gpt um you know it's been in the news lately there's a lot of buzz around it so we will uh, see what chat gpt is in simplistic terms and uh, why are we even talking about this today uh, what uh, um, you know, how is it relevant to this group of uh, of people on this call and what is its impact uh, what are the good things about it the negatives and so on so we'll cover that uh, but to be able to do that in some depth uh, we should also try to go deeper into chat gpt to understand what it's actually doing how it works and what kind of problems exist uh, within the software that we need to be aware of and uh, uh, accordingly use the software um so chat gpt as a software it's a huge leap in technological terms there have been a lot of uh, research paper published on it a lot of research going on people have invested a lot of money large companies typically um so, so there, there's a lot of technology involved in it um, i've tried my best to you know keep it uh, simple enough i hope i've not oversimplified it um hopefully it will be useful um <clears throat> so what is chat gpt um if you are familiar with chatbot software you can uh, readily identify with chat gpt because chat gpt is a type of chatbot uh and what is a chatbot it's usually a browser based application uh, where you can uh, you have the option of entering questions you know you can type in your questions and it responds with uh, its answers um and, and chat gpt in particular uh, is powered by artificial intelligence that's important because there are different types of chatbot software a lot of them are not powered by artificial intelligence chat gpt definitely is um chat gpt is developed by a us based uh, company called uh, open ai uh, open ai initially started off as a non profit uh, but later you know, transitioned into a for profit so we'll look at that a little later um now chat gpt a version of chat gpt is uh, open to the public um there are multiple versions of chat gpt that have been released in the last year or so it has predecessors that go back a few years but those are not very powerful in terms of what they in terms of their capabilities uh, so it has it has not been in the news until recently when a particular version chat gpt 3 uh, turned out to be extremely powerful in terms of what it can do um so anyone can sign up uh, to the current version that's uh, been available for free sign up the current version of chat gpt is chat gpt 4 if you know, come across this in the news it's supposed to be slightly more powerful than chat gpt 3 uh, but the version that you will sign up to when you log in to this url that's on this slide it's a research version it, it's uh, it could be somewhere between 3 and 4 or it's actually 4 itself um chat gpt also offers a commercial version which is a paid version for companies to make use of uh, the company behind chat gpt like i said <coughs> open ai was founded in 2015 as a non profit organization and their idea was to um, you know pro provide produce ai based software that is open it is transparent um, they had very noble goals um and they were anyway you know funded by many technology companies often competitor companies which came together to uh, you know open source um, some of the ai technologies uh, but somewhere down the line their priorities changed and uh, open ai they started a subsidiary or you know however it works it's, it's a us based company whatever structure that they have it transitioned into a for profit company in 2019 there is still some open source software components that chat gpt has made available publicly but that has nothing to do with chat gpt um there is some voice recognition software and so on so in an earlier session in this program uh, guru sir uh, would have talked about what's called open washing that's you know this is an example of that you uh, know something that started as a non profit open source but eventually became a for profit organization 
and it is uh, right now very heavily funded by microsoft uh, microsoft has put in a lot of money um and has an exclusive commercial partnership and the idea is that uh, uh, microsoft uh, if you know has its own search engine called bing like google search their idea is to link up uh, chat gpt with bing and uh, add more capabilities into microsoft bing <clears throat> so um chat bots come in various sizes and shapes uh we'll look at a couple of examples of uh, what chat bots are because they give some core ideas around how uh, at a minimum a chat bot works chat gpt is much more complex than these simple chat bots which we'll talk about a little later uh chat bots are to be contrasted with voice bots um you are probably already familiar with uh, google assistant and siri and alexa and cortana by microsoft and so on um voice bots at at their core are the same as chat bots it's just that if it's a chat bot uh, you know you use a chat based uh, interface you type in uh, things questions and you get a response back and you carry on a conversation whereas voice bots you carry on the same conversation but directly with your uh, voice um so then if siri and google assistant are already there uh, what's new with the uh, and if voice bots and chat bots are essentially the same what is new about chat gpt is just that it is uh, extremely powerful it is much much more you know, many magnitudes um far more powerful than uh, any of the voice bots that we are familiar with so we'll just quickly go to a couple of uh, simple chat bots um and how they work um so if you are familiar with the ircctc website and if you use that frequently uh, you may have noticed a chatbot now some websites uh, you know have this uh, irritating ability to uh, generally pop up this chatbot when you are not interested in talking to the chatbot um but you may have seen this on some uh, uh, commercial sites as well um ircctc for example as a chatbot at the bottom right um, you see this uh, icon of a lady in blue so if you click on it it will open up a window like this and uh, you can uh, you know if you just greet it it will greet you back and if you are if you say i want to book a ticket it seems to understand your question and uh, your need and it asks a relevant question from which day st- which station do you want to book the ticket from uh, so what is actually going on here um the simple chat bots basically um are trained you know like you would maybe train a, you know, a pet dog or uh, even the way a, a young child learns you you give it a lot of similar data and tell what that means so you can say the same phrase you know, i want to book a ticket uh, i would like to book a ticket can you book a ticket for me and so on so from these patterns of words uh, it understands that and then you map those keywords there you know book a ticket and so on to what is called an intent that is the ticket booking and then tell the chatbot okay if the intent is ticket booking then ask this question right so that is all it is so when i say i want to book a ticket it understand the keywords there book and ticket and Now there are different variations of this booking a ticket question that uh, it is familiar with all of them map to the idea or the concept of or the intent of booking a ticket it will ask you a question mark so it, it it doesn't really understand that you know there's a person who wants to travel somewhere and they have a need to book a ticket um another example is uh, on the uida the website again at the bottom right so this is typically where you find these chatbots on any website um you have this aadhar mitra so that's also a chatbot if you click on it it comes up like this so i ask this question how can i update my biometrics it gives uh, this uh, detailed uh, list of things that you could do um so again it works on the same basis it, it understands these keywords update biometrics and so on i can ask the same question in different ways i would like to uh, know update my phone number or i would like to change my email id 
please tell me how to change my email id so these are all variations it it has already been trained to understand these things and based on the intent it gives you a standard response um now to tell you how to illustrate how uh, no, these are not really intelligent uh, if i pose a question and i actually did how can i update my aadhar number now we can't really update our aadhar numbers we can only update attributes related to the aadhar numbers we have an aadhar number that's all we have we can't change it right it actually gives me the exact same response you can change your you know you can make changes to your name and address but i am not asking for that i am asking to change my aadhar number itself and curiously if you even uh, you know so search anywhere on the internet you will not even come across this concept of updating the aadhar number because it doesn't exist it's not possible um so that's how these uh, chatbots work right so if i and these chatbots like i said are trained with a particular intent or a set of intents in mind um so for example aadhar mitra is the intent um, and the it, it's there to help us uh, you know do some of the usual things that we want to do and it's just packaged as a chatbot so you ask some questions it's going to help us by giving some information and we can follow that right so what happens if you give it ask something that it is not being trained for that it doesn't understand um usually these chatbots either they will just throw out a simple question sorry i didn't understand or they may be slightly more polite or they may give some options i didn't understand did you mean this and so on so an example of that is so i asked uh, you know a very random question where can i find penguins to other mitra it obviously didn't understand it so it's asking for clarification what did you mean so it has no idea what i'm talking about um so do you want to do something with other number or do you want to enroll uh, onto the other system um so that's what chatbots are at this point i'm just curious if uh, any of you actually uh, know, seen or worked with any chatbots interacted with uh, any of them in any way if so one or two of you who have done if you can uh, share your experiences that will be nice anyone so can i take it that you are <clears throat> not familiar with chatbots maybe if if any of you worked on please feel free to share um yes sir chatbots in the sense where i have um, experienced it with my bank that is hdfc that's eva eva right yeah so it it pretty much provides um, a very uh, accurate explanation of what is asked with the words keywords that it can uh, pick up Yeah, that's my experience yeah. okay yeah so based on you know i want to open a savings bank account or i want to what is the interest rate on fixed deposit so it goes by these keywords and gives you different options which you can select it gives you a menu of options and so on yes. right so yes, yeah i had I used see. the word e mandate so i think uh, it gave a lot of options and okay okay that's nice yeah thank you uh next time you use it uh, maybe you can not try to ask it where well. you can find penguins or something you know totally random and see how it responds <coughs> okay so moving on um now chatbots or uh, now you can now like i said you can ask any question but it can only answer to the extent it knows it is already trained for but how you now you are all familiar and assuming with uh, you know internet search right it could be google search or microsoft bing uh, so what happens there when we ask this question where can i find penguins for so, um, internet search engines are a class of or a type of application in themselves like chatbots so what happens there so when i type where can i find penguins um, so recently uh, google has come up with people also ask you uh, know what different ways of asking the same thing but people or other people around the world have asked so it gives that in case you want to refine your search or if you meant something else you can go to that uh, but the key thing that it does is it gives you a list of uh, websites links to websites which uh, it believes contain the information that you are looking for right and then you click on uh, click on maybe the topmost link or and sometimes you may not be 
you know getting what you want there then you go to the next one or based on the title there on the link you may just scroll down and uh, you know based on your best judgment you will look for something that you think matches your uh, requirement and then you go into that right so the way this works is uh, um um google essentially crawls the internet and looks for websites that uh, talk about a variety of topics and it just looks for keywords there and uh, uh, looks at the content it analyzes the entire content stores on you know, frequently occurring words and so on and just you know adds all of this to its own database and just gives you the list so that's what it does in a sense we'll see it in some more detail as we go you know, further down um, but essentially that's what it does right so it is not already trained so it is not ai at this point right so it is not but it's it's much more sophisticated than one of the simpler bots that we saw because it's able to give you lots of options and uh, uh, even up to date information and more very accurate uh, search results and so on. so that's what a uh, uh, search engine is does from this now let's go to chat gpt and see what chat gpt does so before we go there i'll just quickly uh, introduce you to the chat gpt interface itself so you if you sign up you can you basically get a web browser uh, um, window where uh, you have you have this kind of a layout at the bottom you have this text box where you can type in your question um or you know, like i have done here if you just say good morning so rc is me here on the top i have said good morning and chat gpt the green icon that you see here has responded with good morning how can i assist you today so that's how the conversation progresses uh, you see this button called regenerate response so chat gpt if you once it gives you a response you can actually click on this button it will it will refresh and go back and reanswer your question and what is interesting is often times it paraphrases itself uh, it just changes things around a little bit uh, it is it is um, as if you know is trying to explain it things to you differently but if you very closely analyze it it uses synonyms it just moves around some things it it uh, inverts concepts it does interesting things there um uh, on the left hand side you have some things you know convenience things um you can create a new chat um chat chat gpt actually titles every conversation that you have so the morning greeting that you see it's actually created by chat gpt because it's a good morning it just given that name to this conversation and you can clear a conversation completely and start over again you see an upgrade to plus option there so chat gpt has uh, this is a free sign up and it has commercial options so you pay money it will it will basically improve the user interface here it will it will look a little better it will give you more conversation maybe to export your conversation to a file um because these are all on servers the other thing that it does is uh, it gives you a server that is faster performs faster so your response time will be uh, you know, if you ask a question it will immediately come back so there are some benefits that you get if you upgrade to a paid option so this is how the chat gpt interface looks like um i would you know if you really like this uh, session and you're curious about chat gpt i would encourage you to sign up and ask uh, no questions and see how it behaves um so what happens when i ask chat gpt you know, how do i find or where do i find penguins so this is what we we'll did you can take a very quick uh, look and read through this so you can see how it has um, structured its response um i would just give you maybe 30 seconds to quickly uh, you know read through this overall to understand what it's trying to say and i would really appreciate if uh, at least two of you uh, can um, share your opinion on what you think about this response not the facts but what does it you know how how do you read this what does it look like does it feel human does it feel robotic if you can share your opinion please you can take you know, another 10 seconds to read through
ओके मे बी पिंकी मैम यू कैन स्टार्ट विथ you can share your opinion and i would like uh, some of the others also please uh yes sir so what i feel when i read about this is it's speaking to a person it's like you know um, addressing you as you if you want uh. to see penguins in the wild you may visit certain places and it's kind of a dialogue i find chat gpt right. very um very you know um they try to humanize it a lot and uh, uh-huh. it, it's kind of a conversation when you ask anything to chat gpt so that's my experience uh-huh. with uh, chat gpt yeah yeah so one important aspect that uh, that distinguishes chat gpt from previous versions and other voice bots and so on is this truly conversational um so what i mean by that is uh, let's say i ask it a question what are your favorite books Uh, it will immediately say i mean first to begin with that it doesn't have favorites and all that but it'll you know it'll say the top 10 popular books uh, uh, are it list 10 and the next question if i just ask what else it will give me a few more so it understands you know what we are talking about so it maintains the context and it's a conversation uh, if if into google you paste what else you'll probably you know not get what you're expecting right these days google is also trying to do that if some of you have noticed it tries to maintain uh, context of what you have searched previously and so on um, but yeah these are conversations and secondly ma'am like you said based on you know it has given us a response and based on your reaction to that response it kind of seems to guess whether what it said earlier was useful or not and accordingly no comes back with further information it tries to refine it it tries to paraphrase um, or it tries to change things around a little bit so that uh, you know it tries to it can be more specific about certain aspects it based on your follow up question it forms an opinion or its own prior answer so there is a learning what you call self learning there is some amount of that happening that's why if you look at the screen they have also given this explicitly a like and an unlike button um just as you know, if you want to give it feedback if you like it then it that also goes into its own self learning yeah yeah thanks for sharing that thank you so one point i wanted to mention um uh, no i heard from you know, the previous two speakers talk about you know, searching in chat gpt i hope you just meant it uh, you know, loosely because it is not a search tool right so in google you can put in a uh what you want to look for in any order and you will probably get very similar search results because it's not really trying to understand your question it's it's largely using the keywords in the text that you have typed but chat gpt is actually trying to understand the question as a human would ask and all that so the the researchers who have you know the, the developers of the software and people who have done research as users and were analyzing chat gpt have actually found that it helps a great deal if we if we act in a human way and ask questions rather than typing keywords like we would in a search engine because this is not a search engine it does not actually even connect to the internet it has already connected to the internet and you know learned a lot and all that but in real time it's not connecting to the internet so it works very differently from a search engine we'll see some more details further down um but uh, you know what i'm trying to say is to get the best out of chat gpt it seems like we should be more human we should ask questions if i just type uh, uh, you know penguin uh, find c or something like that it may come up with answers that are not satisfactory where if you put in a proper sentence or uh, frame it as a question it it is more sensible it seems more sensible so being a different kind of software um and not search engine so sort of software uh, people actually come up with various ways uh, to help get the right kind of responses back from chat gpt okay we'll move on thank you um so we can ask so some of you have actually played with it which is excellent so we have uh, seen things like this but for the rest of the audience who are not let's uh, look at what it does when we ask some more complex questions um penguins are easy enough you know the kind of information you can pull from the internet um so 
there are a couple of examples. The first one is actually I directly copied a question from one of these UPSC training websites. Um, there are a set of questions and I just simply copied the question as it is. It's, it's slightly more abstract and uh, now let's see what it came up with. So poverty in less developed countries is largely due to what's the question. And it has come back with this um, response. Uh, without spending time reading this in detail, let's just go into the structure. There is a little bit of a preamble saying it's a complex issue that can have many causes and so on. And it has neatly given us, so I have not formatted anything here. Right? So it has bulleted, created five uh, bulleted items here with subheadings, subtopics here, education, infrastructure, and access to credit and environmental factors. Um, so there are hidden things here as well. So the on you know, taken at face value, this looks like an amazing response that a, a computer can actually come back with a, a very meaningful, credible answer to a difficult question. It 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 is quite amazing. But there are also things there that that uh, should concern us and should make us ask questions. Um, so these are five answers. Are these really the only five? This is not uh, you know, uh, a pure science sort of a topic where there is a certain fixed answer. There is a certain right answer and a wrong answer. Here, there is more involved. So are these really you know, the reasons for poverty? Right? So what about, for example, historical uh, events? Like uh, we could say from from our point of view in India, colonialism played a big part, right? So where does that feature here? It does not, right? So where is ChatGPT getting all of this content from and how, it, how is it digesting all of this and coming up with responses? Why doesn't colonialism find uh, a mention here? And there could be other things as well, right? So uh, these are things to think about and uh, you know, we'll, we'll go try to cover some of this as we go on. Then the next question I ask is, how, do you, how would you describe the history of Indo-Pak relations? And I specifically put Indo-Pak as a phrase rather than India-Pakistan to see how it uh, responds. It clearly understood Indo-Pak and it's given a really um, nice, that's one opinion, a nice response. Um, if you look at it, that's again a good preamble and then there are different paragraphs addressing different aspects, certain historical events and uh, you know, specific incidents. It is chronological if you look at it. It starts with 1947 around that time and then ends here with uh, uh, 2019 and then sums it up. Um, so these are quite uh, interesting. Uh, in terms of what uh, software software can actually do. <clears throat> so, why is chat GPT in the news? We'll just look at uh, some things that have excited uh, people around the world, both uh, technology people and others who have seen potential impacts of chat GPT in respective professions and so on. So, as you saw, it can compose um, very well structured um, responses to uh, questions that are put in several different ways. And this can be open ended questions, you can have very specific closed ended questions. <clears throat> you know, one of the questions you ask are really answers or opinions. It, it seems to you know, perform this, and it seems to be human like addressing us as you and uh, you know, so on. And one thing it definitely does is sound confident. And so it, it, it seems really confident and obviously its English is very good. So we are all biased. If somebody speaks very good English, you know, even among people, we immediately form a certain opinion. We transfer that sort of uh, uh, you know, mental image to the software as well. So we certainly see it is very confident. And it also provides opinions, not just um, you know, facts. And it seems usually correct as well. But the, the facts and the correctness of things, let's come back to it later. 
um, there are other aspects to consider as well and it definitely performs <clears throat> far far better than uh, anything that we have seen uh, you know a applications do um, certainly better than uh, even the you know, reasonably sophisticated uh, google assistant and uh, um, siri and so on. and uh, people you know when it was released last year people have tried a lot of things and seeing that it can you can ask it to compose essays uh, there are news media organization which have actually uh, got articles composed by chat gpt and published that article on their website also as a regular news article um, it can compose songs and even emails recently i have seen a, a news item that where a, a user asked chat gpt to to compose a, a tweet to which elon musk might respond and it it composed a tweet and this person actually posted that on twitter and elon musk actually replied to it um so we can mimic different styles of uh, writing of well known personalities of course if you try to ask it about uh, your own writing it, it doesn't know you it doesn't have information so it will not do that um it can, it also has summarization capabilities if you give it a really long article it can summarize it for you but you have to paste the entire text into chat gpt it doesn't have access to the internet other than being able to talk to users so if you give it a link it will not do it um it can even write software code if you actually paste uh, software code into it it can identify bugs it can find better ways of writing the software in the us people have experimented by asking uh, it to asking it questions that would appear in uh, business school exams law school exams medical exams and it has passed them to you know getting various uh, levels of various uh, you know uh, ratings grades um so already children and adults alike who are you know, learning Uh, use chat gpt have you have tried to use chat gpt to their homework assignments and uh, in fact some schools in the us have banned uh, chat gpt in their uh, access to chat gpt on the school computers um, teachers have tried to see how they can use it they have pasted student essays um, into it and asked for feedback and chat gpt has come back with the uh, uh, feedback that they could actually use um the other thing you could do or rather the other thing people have done is to give it text and ask it to come up with questions so it does it does come up with questions either open ended questions or even multiple choice questions it seems to understand what we are asking and it comes back with questions as well these are really uh, no mind boggling of course we can get into details of uh, you know things that it could have done better or things that it uh, went wrong in um but this is at least for me mind boggling there's been nothing like this in our um, human civilization before so microsoft i mentioned this um, has already uh, invested in um, open ai the company behind chat gpt and like i said they plan to integrate it with microsoft bing so their idea is to make chat itself more uh, sorry search itself more chat oriented and google has announced recently its own version of uh, an ai powered uh, chat application called bard um so these applications well, these are very new it's in fact less than a year that these have uh, been uh, available to us there have been a lot of positive comments uh, very extremely positive and there are the concerns but these are here to stay and they are only going to get better and they're going to increasingly become more and more accessible so what does this mean for us so a couple of examples i gave here um, of students actually using chat gpt to do their homework or even um, learn about topics like if they are asked about say an uh, indo pak relations the history of it it's as simple as you not know, typing that question in chat gpt and getting a response and having some understanding of the topic 
and teachers are using it and you know, there are a couple of uh, examples that we discuss so what does it uh, mean to us uh, on this uh, forum um, will chat chat gpt actually uh, minimize you know, the human interaction that we have and the whole process of uh, teaching and learning how does it and will it in fact uh, um, disrupt traditional ways of teaching so these are all important questions for us to think about well like i said chat gpt and its future versions are here to stay uh, we'll get to this question again uh, later on um but yeah so let's we uh, before we go into chat gpt specifically we'll uh, you know compare and contrast this with other type of application software application that we come across in our day to day uh, lives there are traditional web based applications for example ticket booking or internet banking or the news websites that we browse um, you know, every day and the internet search engines and then of course we are talking about chat gpt now central to all of this are pretty much any software application even the types of application not covered there if you just take a desktop application if you are just looking at a spreadsheet application or even a word processor if you say open microsoft word or a libre or libre office uh, writer whatever you type in is essentially data right it's going to store it in some format but on your own system so those are desktop applications mobile applications they have each application actually has its own database a well structured database that any mobile application developer has to create and uh, you know install it along with your uh, mobile app and install it from the app store so data is central whatever application you uh, are dealing with uh, uh, but what kind of not you know what kind of data but how the data is produced how it is consumed and processed that makes all the difference right so in perspective you know, in the context of chat gpt it it does not have you know intelligence in the sense that we understand intelligence you know, human intelligence and so on it basically works with data but in a way that these other types of applications don't If you take traditional web application, there is three examples I have given here. If it's a rail book, train booking system, you have structured data uh, that has uh, a certain information that you need to book a ticket. Or if it is a banking application, it has information about your account number, the bank balance, and what type of account it is, and so on. Or news websites have you know, the other example that I've shown here. They are also any news website you go to, they are operate on a database. So there is a database where they feed in through a different application the news articles and so on, and that's what we see on the browser, right? So invariably they all have structure behind them. Uh, they're mostly tabular data that you can fit in. You now the entire content of a news article actually fits into a database. <clears throat> and the data itself the way you know, it changes based on user interactions and there is an important concept here which is uh, garbage in garbage out some of you may have heard the acronym gigo that is garbage in gar garbage out it's a fundamental principle to software because these are not sentient uh, intelligent beings and they work and understand work with data and understand data um, very mechanically based on rules that we create um, if you give garbage data is going to respond um, in foolish ways that's one way of putting it so that's or it's going to give you garbage back so if the people who maintain the irctc website if tomorrow you know, they go and change uh, in the database a particular train that today the you know, source is uh, um, bangalore and say the destination is uh, say calicut and they just change the destination to new delhi that's what you're going to see the next day and that so that that's it basically it so you feed it wrong information you're going to get wrong information back now search engines use data differently but the same principles of garbage in garbage out comes in so we'll just first understand how search engines work um they don't have data of their own so if you are searching for something it basically pulls data from different sources but it doesn't pull data unlike uh, uh, 
typical traditional application it does not have a database where based on what you are asking is going to its database and coming back with information it relies on the internet to create its own database so it goes through what's called crawling it it basically goes over every single website that it has access to on the internet and uh, scans the content there because nobody can really prevent a uh, you know, search engine from accessing your website if it is publicly available so it will go there it will analyze your content it will look at keywords there it will generate keywords it will look at your urls and create its own database of uh, <clears throat> uh, no searchable content so when you are looking for content it's actually going into its own built up database and giving it to you um but it's also able to give you you know late breaking news something that happened an hour ago so it it how that happens is uh, based on this crawling all of these websites over time it understands how often websites change what kind of websites they are um depending on how frequently they change it changes its frequency of crawling those websites and getting content from them so there is still a time lag so if a news website publishes some breaking news now and it's the only website uh, on the internet that has published it you won't get it immediately in uh, in your google search but in a little bit of time depending on how often google is searching that site it's going to come back with so if that happens to be fake news garbage you are going to see that so basically again this, that that's what i meant when i said garbage in garbage out if there are 1000 websites that say one thing about a particular topic and one website that says something else it's very likely you are going to see one of those 100 on listed and this 101st either may appear very late in the search or may not even appear in your search um and the kind of content that it scans it's very different no takes the images you can search on images and you know, pdfs and so on <coughs> and they use their own proprietary algorithms algorithms to show you know what what, what should be the very first result right so that that's what it does and the commercial aspect here comes in you see paid uh, links coming up on top sometimes these are you no know, companies which have paid google to show their links on top first there have been uh, no cases in uh, the us supreme court and so on um where uh, no google has tried to take advantage commercial advantage things like that you can read up um yeah so this is basically what we saw earlier about penguins and there's a search on uh, so the order in which the search results are displayed uh, so what we just discussed um now how does chat gpt use data like i said it doesn't connect to the internet so how does it actually provide you this information it does not have a database of questions it does not have this concept of uh, intents and keywords uh, like we saw with the simpler chatbots um the way chat gpt has been developed is that it it has had a download of a very large number of website uh, you no know, content from uh, website you know at least since it's proprietary information we don't know everything about it but from the published information from uh, open ai uh, they're saying it has gone through most of the internet uh, and it has downloaded all of that content a uh, text data because it's a chat application at least at this point they're saying it has downloaded text data and just plain text data 500 gb is actually a lot they're saying more than 500 gb and it has looked at all of this. so these are words and sentences that uh, you know it comes across on millions of websites it has formed patterns of uh, patterns of structures of word formations and uh, sentence formations what you know if you, if you have a certain set of words what kind what word actually appears after that given a set of words there are statistical algorithms that uh, you know that help with this Uh, you may have seen this with google uh, auto complete email auto complete as well uh, it tries to give you suggest words that's based on what it has seen with other people typing and uh, you know the internet how sentences are structured and so on so there are a lot of st- statistical patterns of words and sentences it has uh, formed out of these billions and billions of words that it has downloaded from the internet there is context to it there is a concept of natural language uh, processing 
which allows us to identify if, if given a line of text say the cat sat on the mat it can identify cat and mat as nouns and what action actually happened there and who performed the docs action on whom it can understand adjectives adverbs so grammatical you know constructs so all of this is uh, pretty standard natural language processing that has been there for several years so it can do all of that now on top of that there are newer things that have happened there are uh, you know things called transformer algorithms which uh, allow it to identify relationships between entities in ways that was not possible before and uh, there is something called large language model training which again use probability and statistics to predict next word so it it when it uh, when it sees a bunch of words it knows what's going to come next um and generative algorithm so that's a big development in the last few years because that's what makes it generate responses of its own which look like you know something that has been uh, originally written um, these algorithms basically are again probabilistic uh, models it looks at structures of sentences and creates equivalent uh, or similar sequences of words based on existing sequences that it has already seen uh, so there there is a simplification i'm doing here uh, on this set of three or four items here and covering years of um, research but you know essentially this is what it does the uh, you know based on this earlier versions of chat gpt were still not satisfactory but you know they introduced a level of uh, human supervision to this based on the responses it gives they said this is okay this is not okay they gave it a you know several hundred version of uh, labelers as they call them have worked on the responses and told it what this could what is not good and based on that it has understood certain patterns and tries to simulate imitate those kind of patterns more often than not so you will actually see structure you know that that initial preamble that it gives that comes out of those sort of patterns that it has understood to be good ways of uh, writing essays and so on now in this there is a side question i don't want to go into this in detail but it's something for us to think about if you have contributed any content on the internet say you know a blog post um or written an article somewhere or contributed to wikipedia those are your copyright although not wikipedia and it but if you contribute an article that's your copyright um i don't think open ai actually ask for your permission to reproduce your content somewhere and if they do should they actually be paying you a share of their profits because your content has actually gone into improving chat gpt um but these are questions to think about um now already like um, um a couple of uh, participants already said there are some limitations um and the problem of garbage in garbage out exists here equally the all the content that it has downloaded it understands it in a certain way and that's that's all it's going to use to respond to you with so if there are things like colonialism never mentioned in the context of uh, poverty on the internet and we can guess probably why um then it's not going to show up in their response right although it is a very valid aspect to consider um now if you look at there is a lot of uh, you know information production you know asymmetry in information production on the internet especially if you are talking about english internet um websites us based uh, you know production of content is very high um uh, european probably is very high from africa asia the representation is less so then no wonder you don't get to see colonialism when we talk about poverty so these are important aspects um there are several other things that go as well go in as well right historical socio economic factors geographic and whose uh, views get projected on the internet more those sort of websites get crawled more um so those are all things that go into feeding chat gpt itself and the responses although they look mature and very confident when we delve deeper into it we definitely find uh, uh, you know actually what's striking is what is not there in the responses and then the human aspect to this uh, i mentioned these labelers who actively participate in training chat gpt saying what is good and what is uh, not good 
probably bring in their own biases and if there are 100 of them uh, working on this to develop the software uh, what kind of subjectivity is going into you uh, know rewarding chat gpt for what it said as a you know it created an essay now these are 100 different people right they have their own opinions also although they may discuss among themselves and go in and uh, evaluate these essays you know as teachers no two teachers probably agree exactly with uh, you know with the paper that you evaluate so those kind of biases will build in here as well and the thing to think about is all of them are working within a commercial enterprise that has a profit motive so what are the things that they say are, are okay that are not okay we don't know it's not transparent to us so one example of content bias here so i just asked a question uh, no relating to food and where can i get food and so on it's come up with this response uh, if you look at some of this you now uh, things like food banks soup kitchens and the snap program these are all you uh, know concepts especially the snap program is a program by the us government and our food banks and soup kitchens we don't identify with that in india at least and you now things like when it says reach out to community centers and churches you know the kind of content that has gone into it for it to be able to generate this content there are other limitations um, uh, there is something called a tendency to hallucinate it's just a very fancy term to hide the fact that these are mistakes right so factually incorrect information that comes out sometimes and there is either content some of you already mentioned that it's not able to be accurate in some cases uh, now i just want to go quickly go to an article that uh, a freelance writer called harry ginnas wrote about chat gpt recently after working with it uh, because it gives us insights into how chat gpt internally processes things so before you go there so uh, harry ginnas actually asked chat gpt um, to write a brief uh, you know resume about harry ginnas himself in a few words so just a few sentences and harry ginnas has written for several uh, you know, uh, websites he has contributed content and his cv is there in many websites and so on so he wanted to understand how chat gpt is going to respond so this is how it responded the top box that you see is a freelance writer blah blah and it says uh, he has written for the new york times guardian huffington post he covers topics blah blah right it seems very nice except that the underlying portions are actually not true so how did it manage to get these three wrong new york times he definitely writes and popular mechanic especially he works on he has written articles for something called uh, i forget the name popular uh, something else but it is saying popular mechanics how did this happen so he and a few others try to investigate this and what they found is um on the internet the term new york times is often followed by these you know names the guardian the huffington post popular mechanics very often right so it does not have after new york times the two or three uh, news media site that he has worked with like you know, the irish times and so on so it has not really looked at his own uh, you know versions of resumes it has gone by the keywords and then the text that it has digested and and these are all statistical uh, you know patterns so after new york times it believes that the word you uh, know the phrase the guardian should come huffington post should come and that's what it has done which is wrong plainly wrong he has never written for the guardian or the huffington post so this gives you an idea of what it's actually doing internally it's all patterns of text that it has digested um so this uh, idea of hallucination what it does um is probably a very if not the single biggest uh, aspect that's problematic because you start wondering is it reliable at all uh, but definitely they are making a progress there to minimize uh, this kind of um, inaccuracies or at least detect it and flag it to the human user when it uh, occurs so that is working progress i believe there are other limitations like i said it doesn't access the internet and the data that it has been used to train chat gpt is from 2021 at least the current version of chat gpt you can see an example here the day before i asked the question of the president it still says ramnath kovin but immediately asked what is today's date and it gives the right date 
right so it doesn't have the concept of time and past and present it says his term will end on you know, in 2022 but it knows or rather knows in double quotes today's date is uh, so and so in 2023 um the other big issue is uh, especially on research topics where no open ended essay questions it makes very strong statements but you don't get a reference and it is not possible by design for it to refer to you know give you a reference to sources because it is digested information from so many sources so a particular sentence that comes out of it um uh, it's making it up based on what it has digested so it cannot give references to sources maybe some day change but right now it does not um there is an environmental aspect uh, these sort of applications require a lot of energy uh, hundreds of servers that are running apparently there are more than 1000 servers that are running on uh, chat gpt and in general running ai over the last decade has been very very uh, energy intensive um so chat gpt strengths we have discussed uh, previously uh, all that it can do and all that people have tried to use it for um and all the limitations as well but we need to remember that these are only very initial days in fact um we have seen how internet has progressed um, over the last 10 15 years uh, so we should keep that in mind when we say there are limitations it's probably a matter of time before uh, many of these limitations go away and uh, um, you know it keeps getting better in terms of its ability to produce content respond to questions and we have to keep in mind it's already performing very very impressively it's mind boggling that's the word uh, you know i have for it having worked in the sector uh, seeing how uh, siri and google assistant all behaved so far this just makes it it's a completely new game that it is playing um already chat gpt is available for commercial use people can uh, interact uh, with, uh, you know, companies can build applications connecting to chat gpt uh, uh, in the back end um applications are being developed like i said microsoft bing is already in fact using uh, on a test basis um, chat gpt very soon we'll have learning apps uh, question and answer apps and so on that will start coming out now we go back to the question um uh, and 